Let's not forget, the Army said it was a flying saucer. Nowhere in my research uncovering the Roswell story did I find any evidence of any kind of conspiracy or cover-up of any kind. James McAndrew wrote the recent official government report on the Roswell incident. What was found near Roswell in July 1947 was the very first launch of an experimental project called Project Mogul. Project Mogul was a high-altitude balloon program designed to detect Soviet nuclear explosions. Launched from nearby White Sands military base, these balloons, according to the government, landed near Roswell in 1947. As for the alien bodies, McAndrew credits another military project in which new parachute designs were tested by dropping crash dummies from a high altitude. And we believe that this is what people observed, the Air Force recovering from the desert, that have now become the so-called aliens of the Roswell story. I think Roswell is, is in many ways very similar to the Kennedy assassination. No matter what you tell people, they don't accept the truth. The crash dummy project did occur. But as official documents state, not until 1954. The government believes foggy eyewitness memories have blurred the two incidents into one. It's, it's one lie followed by another. There's only one thing in the entire world that makes sense. And that is that they got their hands on what probably were the remains of an E.T. craft. Although what actually happened at Roswell is in question, the subsequent effort of the United States government to study UFOs is not. Between the summer of 1947 and the end of 1952, the Air Force had collected some 3,200 UFO reports. And it concluded that approximately a quarter of them remained unexplained after investigation. They were classified as unknowns. This exhaustive investigation was conducted under the names Project Sign, Project Grudge, and ultimately Project Blue Book. In 1952, Blue Book would face its greatest challenge when a dramatic UFO incident rocked the nation's capital. Over three consecutive weekends, a cluster of low-flying yet high-speed UFOs buzzed Washington's historic monuments. All I might add in restricted airspace, these objects were witnessed. Newspapers all across the United States reported on this. Civilian and military radars in and around the Washington area were picking up these objects. Planes were scrambled, not from nearby Andrews Air Force Base, but from a farther away base. The hottest aircraft we had at that time was brought into the fray. The impact of these sightings was felt throughout the corridors of power in Washington. There were so many reports that intelligence channels got clogged up with UFO reports. In other words, if a hostile foreign power had chosen that moment to attack the United States, the message could not have gotten through to the Pentagon. This undermined our ability to respond to what the defense establishment felt was a more likely threat. Soviet nuclear missiles. Alarmed, the CIA began a full inquiry. Now, not as you might suspect to make a determination on what UFOs were, but how do we treat this in the public? What do we do to make UFOs into a non-subject. They said basically our uh, principal goal on the national security level is to debunk UFOs, and they did use that term. And so it became policy to debunk UFOs. Project Blue Book was told to adopt this new skeptical agenda in spite of any evidence to the contrary. Project Blue Book's mandate was to reduce the number of unknowns to a minimum, even if their explanations were ridiculous. We've been able to explain them as uh, hoaxes, as erroneously identified friendly aircraft, 
as meteorological or electronic phenomena or as light aberration. In 1969, the debunking operation largely successful, Project Blue Book was officially terminated. Blue Book uh, was stumped, absolutely stumped, on more than 700 cases. So even Blue Book, charged with getting rid of UFOs at any cost, couldn't get rid of all of them. What is the real truth about UFOs? What the Air Force was trying to slip past the public tells me that they have something just as sure as God made little green apples that they're still hiding. Whether they call themselves abductees, experiencers, or contactees, these people and thousands of others just like them say they've been kidnapped by extraterrestrials. Could an alien race actually be conducting a widespread abduction program? It's a question that goes right to the heart of the UFO controversy. The impact of these experiences on the people that have them is enormous. UFO. Harvard professor of psychiatry, Dr. John Mack, is a Pulitzer Prize winning author who has researched the abduction phenomenon. His book detailing his exhaustive study is considered a landmark work on the subject. The abduction experience changes them at every level. It changes their relationships within their families, their sense of who they are, their sense of the world that they live in. This is an enormously powerful part of their life experience. The most important aspect of these experiences that made me believe that they were events rather than something else was the fact that the stories were so similar. A typical abduction would go something like this. Uh, the person is in their bedroom. A light will come into the bedroom, an intense light. It was very bright, but it wasn't blinding. You could look into it. It had like a blue hue around it. Then they may see one or more humanoid beings around the bed. They were tall. They were very thin, huge eyes. They are paralyzed. They end up uh, entering uh, a UFO, some kind of a craft. And there are uh, what they call the greys, with these now familiar, well-described big black eyes. There's something with the eyes that really catch the attention to the point of where looking at the rest of the physical being is not as important as paying attention to the eyes. A number of procedures are done to their bodies which uh, may involve probing of almost every part of the, the body, uh, taking of sperm from men, eggs from women. It was very powerful and very intense and felt very vile. I felt very violated. There was a, a sense of helplessness, a sense of being violated, and everything else associated, like with a rape. these stories true or are they just well-told imaginative lies we're not dealing with just invention of a story something occurred here that triggered a set of, of emotional reactions that's highly significant who knows why I mean, who knows how this Bud Hopkins is an abduction expert who has written a number of best-selling books on the subject we really don't know he conducts group therapy sessions with those who claim they're victims of these bizarre incidents Maybe I'm a bit in these meetings, abductees can share their stories without fear of ridicule. A whole lot I was put through a series of tests, and I thought I was going crazy. Even though what they're saying might sound crazy, they don't have the kind of behavior that crazy people have. When we do psychological testing, we find that uh, these people are essentially psychologically normal. But a common thread in these abduction stories raises doubt. Most abductees have little conscious memory of their time spent with the aliens. 
They do an incredibly good job of blocking your memory from recalling almost anything. And this is the most difficult obstacle to overcome. It's this aspect of the abduction experience that Hopkins has termed missing time. And he explores it through hypnosis. I'm going to count to three. Over his 30 years of studying UFOs, Hopkins has hypnotically regressed hundreds of abductees. He's convinced the truth can be found in the subconscious mind. I want to scream for my mom. Mm -hmm. But I can't. Why? Because it hurts to move. There's just all around me and I can't move anywhere. There's no, there's no space to run. I've worked with abductees from South Africa and Saudi Arabia and Israel. Just standing there in the middle of the room, is that mm -hmm. it? I have no alternative than what the evidence suggests to me in an absolute way. It's going on. It's happening. It's real. The abduction phenomenon is, is absolutely everybody. It's the good, the bad, the ugly. It goes across all uh, uh, racial divides and, and gender, of course, and cultural level. It's absolutely everybody. It appears to be completely random. A CNN time poll has found that half of all Americans believe there are people who have experienced an alien abduction. An Europa poll has discovered that 0.3% of their sample question believe they might have been abducted by aliens. This percentage may seem small, but it could translate to over 800,000 people. Many of those studied by Bud Hopkins have one thing in common. In terms of their personalities, many of them are suffering from what we might diagnose as post-traumatic stress disorder. I mean, when you get up in the morning and you have had one of these experiences, it's not like you just get up and want to make toast, you know? I mean, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Something happened to these people. There's no doubt about that in many, many, many cases. But not everyone agrees. What's the first thing that you sense is different? Among research psychologists, Hopkins' beliefs and methods are seriously questioned. It's the nature of hypnosis to put thoughts in someone's head that weren't there before. I'm not allowed to hide. Who doesn't want any time? You put your faith in that person because you're lost and you're scared and you don't know what to do. But why can't anyone help me? That person puts you into an altered state of consciousness and together you sort of do a little dance that convinces both of you that yes, you've had this experience, you are an abductee. There is a type of person who is highly imaginative, who is easily hypnotized. They're normal. They're sane. They're not psychotic. But hypnosis is the yellow brick road to fantasy land. The big uh, false issue that has always been dragged into this argument is the issue of hypnosis. Maybe a third of the abduction accounts we get come without any hypnotic regression whatsoever. They remember the way one remembers an automobile accident or a mugging. I remember going inside this whatever it was and um, being examined somehow. Another explanation offered by skeptics is that abductees are actually experiencing what's called a waking dream. The waking dream occurs when you're going to sleep or just waking up. Your eyes are open, but you tend to see dreamlike images. And you may feel paralyzed if you're just waking up because your body is still asleep. And it may be very vivid, uh, very colorful. And the person is probably actually going in and out of a dream state. And yet it seems very real. It seems as though I'm awake. In spite of the criticism, Hopkins believes the sheer number of reported abductions is impossible to ignore. There are many theories trying to attack it, but the theories don't hold water. Thousands of people are claiming that this is happening. There's a massive evidence supporting that. Now, for me, the evidence constitutes proof that this is going on. Well, I don't know that I really want to believe it's true. C.D.B. Bryan, author of the bestseller Friendly Fire, investigated the abduction phenomenon for the New York.